Ever get that wavering feeling like you might have to take a and the feeling gets stronger when you stand in a certain spot? Well, right now my cump ass is leading me toward the N64 shelf. Getting warmer, warmer, warmer. Ugh. There it is, Glover. First time I heard of this game, I was like, huh? Glover? Is it Danny Glover, Donald Glover, Crispin Glover, Roger Glover? No, it's the hamburger helper riding a red ball. So you play as a glove. I used to think it had something to do with Super Glove Ball, but that's another game. You probably remember that one in my Power Glove episode. Together, these would make my list top two worst glove games. But Glover doesn't use the Power Glove, thank God. And luckily, after it left a skit inside the N64 toilet bowl, Zelda Ocarina of Time came along and pissed it away only a week after it pissed us off. Now, honestly, when Glover first came out, it seemed pretty cool, but so did everything that was 3D. In the old days, all we had was 3D World Runner and pseudo 3D like that. Later, there were games like Jumping Flash on PlayStation, but it was Super Mario 64 that fundamentally changed the 3D platformer as we knew it. With its freedom to move around in a circle and even reposition the camera, it was a big deal. Afterwards, games like Banjo-Kazooie and Spyro the Dragon proved that Nintendo had started a trend. Here we go! Some of these games were good, and some of them were <laughs> But sometimes we just accepted it because it was 3D, it was cutting edge, and cool. As kids, sometimes a game we thought was good might have actually been all along. When I first played Ghostbusters on NES, I didn't want to admit it was garbage because it was Ghostbusters. It had to be good, right? What about Ninja Turtles? One of my early episodes. That game drove me insane. It sucked. But what did I know? It was the number one top rated game in Nintendo Power for a while. But every game was supposed to be good. We were lied to, psychologically manipulated into thinking we were wrong. But no more being slighted by the games. It's time for Glover. Let's go. The game opens inside a castle and we're introduced to the red-nosed drunken wizard who's recklessly throwing into a bubbling cauldron. Idiot. It knocks him through the floor. Yeah, right through the damn floor. Screaming like Goofy. And I guess his gloves or hands fell off. One glove falls into the slop and morphs into the evil cross stitch, while the other becomes our protagonist, Glover. I'd like to say he flips the bird, but with only four fingers, uh, too bad. Well, he transforms the wizard's magic crystals into rubber balls so they don't shatter, but oops, they bounce into what become the game's levels. So now, go fetch That would have made a better title. They should have called it that. So, that's the plot. The gameplay is far more complicated, and I'll tell you what, it's very ambitious and creative, but there is a huge learning curve, so if you rented it from the video store, you'd better hope the last person returned the manual. And you would also need those strategies from Nintendo Power, issue 114. It had a whole section with tips and tricks for each stage, but why would you care? Look what's on the cover. The goal is to collect six missing crystals and return them to the center of the castle to save the wizard and the kingdom. For every crystal you bring back, new worlds unlock. Much like Mario 64, the castle grounds act as your hub, connecting all the worlds. Each world has three levels, a boss fight, and a bonus stage, and they're all based on specific themes. Atlantis, Carnival, Pirates, Prehistoric, Fortress of Fear, and Out of This World. The game's helper character, Mr. Tip, is a wizard's hat with googly eyes that give you, uh, tips. Because it's one of those type of games where you need everything explained to you every step of the way. Kind of like that annoying office assistant, Clippy. You use the B button to talk to him, but that's the same button to bounce the ball. So sometimes this kind of happens. Come on! I hate these type of characters. Biggle. Biggle, 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 biggle. Biggle. Um, okay. Alright. Pickle, 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 pickle. Okay. Alright. Pickle. Pickle, 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 pickle. Pickle. Thanks for the advice. Pickle. Anyway. Mr. Tips is always showing up, telling you to do this, do that, tells you to collect garibs. Uh, wait, wait. Garibs? 
collect garibs to score points, get 50 and win an extra life. Wow, that would help. If I knew what garibs are. You gotta be kidding me. I also need to comment on this bird. Tell me, what are you hearing? Is it just me, or does the bird have gas? Out both ends. The objective of each level is to find the ball. Okay, wait, hold on now. The bird was farting. Sorry, I can't let that go. Anyway, you get the ball to the end goal while solving puzzles and avoiding obstacles. These obstacles range from your standard pitfalls and spike traps to spinning platforms, blowing fans, giant snowballs, falling rocks, etc. It's like playing Marble Madness, but if you also had to move a hand around to guide the ball by dribbling, smacking, throwing, and running on top of it. I don't even know where to begin with describing these controls. When you're running on the ball, for example, you have to be pushing the joystick in the opposite direction you're trying to go. You have to train your brain to think in reverse. You also have enemies to contend with that will try to steal or destroy the ball, and some will go as far as to intentionally knock it off the stage, which basically means you're dead. It seems underneath every stage is a bottomless pit, so you can't take your eyes off that ball. Hitting B makes Glover point at the ball, which is great so you never lose track of it, but that doesn't guarantee you'll be able to get to it before a giant bumblebee rocket launches it with a stinger at its ass. But the worst enemies gotta be the explosive ones, like this dynamite hot around. If you somehow figure out how to avoid the blast with Glover, the ball still gets blown into pieces or is sent careening over the edge like a turd shot at a cannon. You want to be holding that ball at all times. Besides, without it, you move around like 10 pounds of shoved into a 5 pound glove. Much like how rolling in Ocarina of Time was a little faster than running, Glover is best when he's jumping constantly. Every time you get a game over, you'll need to reload your save file and run all the way back to where you were from the castle gates. So get ready to hop 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 like a bunny on crack. Too bad Glover's little fingers don't make him move any faster. Thing from Adam's family could teach him a few pointers. You can change the ball's form by tapping the R button. It can become a rubber ball, a bowling ball, a ball bearing, and the ball's original shape, the crystal. The crystal is very fragile. It's only useful for collecting more points, so don't try to bounce it unless you want to hear Glover scream like E.T. The crystal and rubber balls float on water, allowing Glover to ride them. The bowling ball and the ball bearing are naturally heavier and can sink, which is great for pressing switches underwater. And boy, will you be pressing a lot of switches in this game. The white switches with red stars, Glover can activate on his own by fisting them, or fist slam, punching. And the red switches with yellow targets can only be activated by the ball. These switches will open up the next section of a course or a checkpoint. Each level has multiple buttons that you'll need to hit to progress, and oftentimes they're located at the end of difficult platforming sections. The amount of precision required in this game is something you would never understand unless you've actually played it. The only way I can even think to describe it is if you're familiar with those maze games with the tiny balls, it's kinda like that. When you play it, you have to give it your full concentration and you say to yourself, I can do this, but you keep failing. Well, imagine if you were trying to play more than one maze at a time. You have both the glove and the ball to deal with. Keep your eye on Glover, oops, you lost the ball. Keep your eye on the ball, I died. This circus level in particular brings my to a boil. Let me ask you a question. What comes to mind when you think of the circus? You know, clowns, cotton candy, uh, fire breathers, acrobats, a giant blue b What were they thinking? And you ride it by bouncing on it? It's like that episode of South Park, and you know the one I mean. And if not, well, well, well. But 
check out this part. First, you need to cross two swinging pirate ships, but the momentum flings Glover and the ball around like ragdolls. Every time I try to get on this damn thing, it either tosses me like a frisbee, or the ship moves and I fall to my death. Here we go, here we go. Here, oh, ah. Oh. See this Up until this point, most of my deaths were the result of me not totally grasping the controls or some bad camera angles, but now it's as if the game is actively fighting against me. What the f was that? All right, there we go. All I gotta do is bounce it. You just gotta time it right. There we go. Not a problem. Not a problem. And what the f Okay, your mother. <sighs> Once you finally make it across and take a ride down the slide, be prepared for any hope left in your body to exit your ass. Ahead of you is a winding checkered path. Seems straightforward enough. Well, as soon as you start rolling the ball down this thing, it starts tilting and turning all over the place like a damn tilt a whirl. Here we go. Making the turn. Oh, whoa. Whoa! What the f happened? If the pirate ships were the eighth circle of hell, this is certainly the ninth. Ugh. Maybe what I need is the power glove. And I don't mean the NES power glove. I mean the N64 power glove. You think I'm kidding? Do you think I'm kidding? Yeah, you didn't know. You didn't know the Nintendo 64 had the reality quest glove. Yeah, now let's crank it up to 11. Smell the glove! Want to see a magic trick? How about a magic? <laughs> ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! 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 The PlayStation version is easier? <laughs> it's a walk through the park. It's... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why didn't I play this one instead?
Well, I'll be. <laughs> Ah! <laughs>